Hi guys, Sylvia from Solotronics. Uh, just wanted to show you this little uh, experiment here. Uh, it's just a rotor, four magnets on it, spins freely. Okay, there's no wires attached to it or anything like that. This is just simply mounted on a shaft that's in my vise, just to hold it in place. This is just a simple rotor. Okay, and yeah, that fits in here. With four magnets. Now, <clears throat> this is a holder. This is a little brass bushing right there. This also comes off, spins freely as well. Uh, let's see if we can. Okay, so little brass bushings right there, and uh, nothing to this. And it just basically rides on the shaft of this little bracket. That's also free. Now you can see that these two are not touching together. This is free and this is free, but they're in close proximity with each other. Okay, uh, I can't really tell from there, but there's, there is a gap there. See if I can get closer. There is a gap, right? And uh, anyways, I'm gonna spin this uh, with my Dremel. Actually, you can see what's happening right there even with my hand. This is starting to spin, but there's no contact whatsoever. I can stop this and this will continue to go. Okay, now if I spin this with my Dremel, you can see that that's going to take off quite a bit. So here we go. Now, I can stop this with my finger. Okay, that's still going. If I release, pick it up. So, um, anyways, that's Lenz's Law for you. Let this law, as far as I'm concerned, is only effective if one of these is stationary. But when they're both free to turn, let this law actually helps each other to spin. Uh, it's obvious that the magnets here are creating eddy currents in the brass, and uh, it's creating uh, the brass is creating its own magnetic field, which opposes the magnet. But because the magnet is in motion, is in motion, the eddy currents here are trying to oppose that magnet. And in order to oppose it, it try, as it, the magnet approaches, this tries to fly away, but the magnet still comes in, it's still within proximity. So this turns a little bit more. And then as it carries uh, past the brass, it actually stops rotating, but the momentum will carry it slightly and by that time the next magnet is coming into place and producing another um, current through the brass that's producing eddies and again it gives it another push so this is this is basically works on eddy currents developed in the brass by the rotating magnets and as you can see again just by my finger it'll It'll start uh, rotating. Okay. Now, um, if you were to add more magnets around here to basically fill up the entire rotor, <clears throat> then by spinning the brass itself, it'll cause the rotor to spin. All that's required is a slight push. Once you push, once you give it just a slight push with this rotating at high speed, it will continue rotation. Okay. So the only friction between the two parts here are the actual um, axles where the bushing sits and where the rotor sits. Aside from that, there's no friction between the two, but yet they help each other to rotate. Okay, so that's my little video for today. And uh, I know there's a video out here like this that has to do with uh, with what they call.
called a utron. This is shaped as a utron, have basically a couple of cones that are back to back, solid piece of aluminum. They're basically doing the same thing. They're putting a, uh, they're actually spinning the utron with uh, a suspended magnet in a some kind of cup, and uh, the magnet is actually spinning. This is kind of the reverse idea, but uh, still works. And there are no wires, okay? There's no wires to produce any electromagnetism, nothing at all. Okay, there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.